It was brought in by a fisherman uh, to a woman who ran a small natural history museum in East London, South Africa. Found this at the wow. bottom. She had never seen a fish like it before. It's way cuter in person. <laughs> Welcome to Wavelengths, where we talk about our planet with experts from Scripps Institution of Oceanography, covering everything from the deep sea to the edge of the atmosphere. I'm Kate Furby, a marine biologist and journalist. I got my PhD here a few years ago, and now I'm back, learning more about what's happening at Scripps. I'm with Ben Frabel today. He's the Marine Vertebrate Collection Manager here at Scripps Oceanography. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do as a collections manager? Yeah, so my role here is to kind of maintain the collection, but also make all of this accessible to the scientific public all over the world. So that is, you know, sharing all the data on the internet so people can find what we have, and then also hosting researchers when they come to visit. So you're like an underwater librarian? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Ben, this place is huge. How yeah. many how many fish do you have in here? So in the collection, we have about 6,000 different species of fish represented, and about 140,000 jars, two million fish specimens, and some bigger containers for, for bigger fish, like tuna and sharks and eels and that kind of stuff. Cool, and then how many fish species do we know about? At the moment, there are about 35,000 known species of fish, but that number is kind of continually growing. There's about 300 to 500 new species being described and discovered every year. So far this year, there's already been 179 species named. That's cool. That's like one a day. One a day? Yeah, almost. So like every time I brush my teeth, we think of it. You only brush your teeth once a day. Oh, I brush my teeth twice a day. I was trying to think of what I do once a day. <laughs> Every time I go to bed, there's a new species of fish described. This is actually the uh, deepest fish that's ever been collected with kind of a reliable depth record. Um, so this is a Mariana snailfish. It was collected in the Marianas Trench and the species was described about three years ago. This species of hammerhead shark is considered endangered. Uh, this is an endangered damselfish that hasn't really even been seen in like the last 30 years. Um, these are one of the most endangered fish in the world. These are called totoaba. This is a deep sea anglerfish, uh, kind of fairly rare um, fish that lives in the deep ocean with a very unique life history and biology. These are pygmy sharks. This is one of the smallest species of sharks. The vast majority of shark species are fairly small. Um, and these are one of the smallest. These are adults. These are adults? Are they friends? Uh, I have no idea. Look at their faces. So can you tell us kind of how this all got started? Collection has kind of been around Scripps in one form or another since its inception, um, but really this is kind of built up um, in, in the 1940s through 1970s by researchers here at Scripps that were exploring the ocean throughout the Pacific and trying to learn a lot more about especially the deep sea and the fish that live in those environments because it was you know, the previously really not well known. Yeah, that's something that really blows my mind about the ocean, is that like there's still so much we don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's like, a, that's a huge part, is that there's still so much unexplored, so much we don't know. What these fish are doing and how these environments are operating are kind of constantly changing, and being able to document that by having this material available for future generations is very helpful, and so that's kind of why we need to keep going. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, is that the world is just continuing to change. And I think as things change more and more, records like this will become even more important in the future. <laughs>